I'm gonna escape the Isle of Skye. We're gonna go and see some wild dolphins feeding right at our feet whilst having a crack and drive through the Scottish Highlands before we head over to Aviemore and an inland lock in Scotland with a glorious sandy beach. For the past couple of days, it's been chucking it down with rain all day, all night. But on the east coast of Scotland, it's been dry and sunny. That's where I'm gonna go. One thing I really wanted to do on the Isle of Skye was spot some marine wildlife. You know, it's famous for things like minke whales, basking sharks, dolphins, and I haven't seen a single thing. And I've been sat there for hours and hours with the binoculars trying to spot them. There's a famous pier spot where you can physically see dolphins going absolutely crazy, rounding up all the fish to come into a harbour. On the inlet to that harbour is where they go absolutely ham. I'm hoping tonight we can get a nice little park up next to Loch Ness. It's one of the last iconic locks in Scotland that I've never seen. Before I leave Sky, I've got to fuel up. That's not too bad. A 64 mile to get to Loch Ness. Look at that, only just got out of sky and the rain stopped. That's gotta be a good sign, hasn't it? You watch, I've left the rain behind and he's gonna follow me all the way over there. Guaranteed that's what's gonna happen. See, this is exactly how Scotland should be. I know it's never like this, it's dry. It doesn't even look like the roads had any water on it. The trees aren't blowing a gale where I think they're gonna fall on me. This is just beautiful. But tomorrow's the one I'm looking forward to. I'm really looking forward to seeing some dolphins. I just want to see some sea life, marine life, that sort of thing. It's just something that Scotland's famous for and I want to be able to see it. So the place where we're going, they have the inlet where this dolphins come and push all the fish into that area and then they feast out on them. I was reading somewhere that an hour after low tide, when the tide's turned and it's coming back in, that's the best time. So when I park up tonight, I've got to check out those tide times, see what happens. I may even have a look around that area. It's right on a like, like on a pen peninsula sort of thing that sticks out. I'll show you more about it tomorrow. Holy mother of God. That's my first ever look at Loch Ness. So just behind those trees, I've just caught a glimpse of it coming down the hill. That is absolutely massive. I was coming down a hill right at the start and all you could see was just the, the lock. It's massive. I can start to see why they think there's something prehistoric living in there. We've actually got blue in the sky. What? Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> it's not even six o'clock in the morning. We're right next to Loch Ness. 5.42. And I've got to defog the windscreen. But why am I heading off so early? Low tide's at seven o'clock in the morning. I'm an hour away, so I should get there about low tide. Hopefully there's parking, because there's, there's limited amounts. Then we can go around to the Dolphin Park, the little point, have a look. We wave goodbye to Loch Ness and the police car that's flying past us. And make our way over to Channery Point. We can see the point that we want to go to all the way out there. Not even 7 o'clock yet. It's like 20 to 7, so we've got 20 minutes until the tide turns and it starts to come in. But it's about an hour after the low tide where they recommend you're going to see them. You may not even see them, the wild animals at, at, at the end of the day. Burkhard, I hope I see them. This is awesome. I don't entirely know what to look for. I'm just having a little wander down the, the little stone beach just to see if there's another point further down. Um, but that looks like the, the sort of the point that everyone's on about. So this is Channery Point. On the incoming tide, the salmon come in and the dolphins push the salmon even further. And this is the pinch point where they start feeding on them. So I'm really, really hoping we see them. I can't get over just how quiet this place actually is. There's literally nobody around. All the videos I've seen, this place has been packed. Makes me wonder whether or not I've got the right place. But I've also got to keep in mind, it's seven o'clock in the morning on a Sunday morning. Nobody's this crazy. Look at this for a setup. I've got my full tripod out, my DJI Osmo Pocket on the top just there. And I'm just up sat, waiting now, watching, listening to the sound of the waves as they crash just there. I'll just check the tide again because it still looks like the tide's going out. And when I checked last night, it was like 7 o'clock, or I thought it said 7 o'clock. I've just checked again, it's closer to 8 o'clock. <laughs> it doesn't matter, it means we're going to be studying a bit longer but it'll be worth it. And boy, was it worth it. Just before low tide had even started, the dolphins started to show up. It just seemed to be one, two, maybe three, two, maybe a young, that was just coming in and they were sort of making their way past the point into the actual bay. As you can probably tell, I was extremely happy at this point. We just watched them going all the way down. Or I say we, 
there was me and an, another gentleman there. We just sat there and watched them go into the bay, mooching as they were going free, because the seagulls in the background going mental over something. I'm thinking they were just feeding on small fish while the dolphins were concentrating on the big salmon. What an absolute amazing experience. This all lasted for around about 15 minutes until they went out of eyesight. It wasn't long though until they started to come back. I think they must have gone into the bay, had a good feed and then made their way back out the bay. You can see them coming out Ooh. just here. Literally, I kid you not, right at our feet. There was the three that went in and the three come back out. They had a little feed on the way out, but then we had around about an hour of no sightings, nothing around. But then all of a sudden, a lot more decided to show up, including a seal as well. Apparently, by now, a load of the locals had turned up and there was a lovely little old lady. She was telling me she's been here all her life. Nearly every low tide, she comes down, she watches them. She knows them all by name based on their fin. She had been watching these dolphins since they were babies. Watched them grow up and then all of a sudden one year, one pair would have a baby with them. It was absolutely amazing to hear some of the stories she was telling us. It was around about nine o'clock by this point. So it was well after, an hour after low tide and they were still here going absolutely crazy. A load more people started to turn up as and when the, how close they are. Oh, just watching this edit back, it, it's just an absolutely amazing experience. But as the tide was coming in, we found ourselves having to move back because obviously we didn't want to get our feet wet. The further we moved back, the closer they seemed to come in. I will leave this location in the description down below. It'll be a Google Map pin, so if you are on mobile, you can just click on that pin. It'll flip your phone straight over to Google Map and show you exactly where it is. That way you can pin it for next time you're up near Inverness. You can go and have a little look for yourselves. I am told by some of the locals that were around that it's not always like this. Sometimes it's quiet, sometimes you don't see them, sometimes there's only one or two, sometimes there's even more than now. It'd definitely be worth a visit on your trip on the North Coast 500. This is right at the start of the North Coast 500. It would be nice to stay here all day, but we can't. One, the phone battery is about to die because I'm filming this on my phone. It can zoom in a bit better than my camera. And two, we've got a lot more to do within this video. We want to get down to Abbeymore. It's somewhere that I've never been before, but everyone raves about it. So I want to go check that out. Apparently, they've got a little steam train sort of area there. Then we're going to go head over to Loch Morlach. There's a beach on an inland lock there. Apparently that's really nice, so I can't wait to get up there. It's Sunday, so I imagine that might be busy, so it'll be nice to try and overcome that. And hey, we've even got some really exciting things that may be happening, if they're open or closed. If you are enjoying the dolphins, drop me a subscribe. It's completely free, and you just get notified next time I do upload a video. And you never know, the next video might be a hidden gem, just like this. That was amazing! <laughs> That was properly amazing. Oh, so this is um, Channery Point, I think it's called. I'll leave the Google Map pin down below. It's well worth a visit. Three quid to park for four hours. Come one hour. Oh, no, come at low tide. And then as the tide's coming in, that first hour as the tide's coming in, all hell breaks loose. All the salmon come down here and it just... Oh, the dolphins are everywhere, tearing apart, jumping out of the water, just... Oh, it's absolutely amazing. That's what I needed after my hassle up on the Isle of Skye. That was awesome. Oh, yes. <laughs> I went down there with 74% battery on my phone and a full battery on my camera. My camera died within just a few minutes because I thought it said full, but it might not have said full. 74% on my phone, that died off like within two hours. My phone was just constantly on record looking at everything. I was one second there, the next second I was up there, then I was over there. There was loads of babies and oh, it was just oh, it was just amazing. Fan lifers all over the world rave about Avimore. So I'm gonna head down to Avimore and just have a look and see what it's all about. I have done no research about the place. Everyone just says it's dead good. So I found a car park and I'm hoping I can fit in it and we'll see what it's like. Then I'll over to Lock Moor Lock. Apparently it's the only lock that's got a proper sand beach on it. So we'll go and have a look, see if we can fit there. It's a Sunday, so I don't know how well this is gonna go. Oh my God, through the little village, at Avok, I think it's called, I've just seen a pine martin run across the road. I mean, most people won't know what a pine martin is or anything like that. 
but they're an endangered species. They're like a weasel. Oh, then he that was big. Oh, what? That was awesome. Oh, yeah, it was definitely, definitely the right move coming over to uh, this side of Scotland. I wonder if I'll be lucky enough to see the reindeer up in the Cairngorms Mountain Park. It was just over an hour on the sat-nav, but I took it nice and slow, nice and gentle. I wanted to take in all the scenery from Inverness down to Aviemore. And boy, was there some absolutely beautiful scenery. It wasn't long, though, before we did pull into Aviemore. Parked up in the retail park in Aviemore because you've got home bargains, Audi... Uh, Costa coffee, so I should be able to stock up on all the things I need. But I think everybody else has had the same idea. This is a whole row of camper vans. <laughs> See what I mean? There's a load on the back wall, too. Oh, I just heard a steam train. There was three hours free parking in Aviemore. That's all I needed. I just needed to go for a look and see what the hype was about Aviemore. We found a lovely little craft fair, had a little wander around there. It was great to speak to some of the local artists, the local suppliers, just having a chat and catching up with them. We heard the steam train, so we, do you know what? Let's go down and have a look there. It was actually quite a shock. I never knew this was here. I got Danielle a little gift. Basically, it's gin. It's a little bottle of gin of a new flavour for her to try. So I'll put that up there with the Highland Cow cooking mitt things she's got. She loves Highland Cow. She loves cooking. She loves gin. Bargain. Let's go into the shops and stock up. I didn't need much, so I only got a bit. Normally, I'm a bit sarcastic when I say this, but Avimov, it's been a pleasure. It's quite a nice place, to be fair. Yeah, highly recommend. One of my friends, Neil from Dub Dad Community, he said go to Lock Morlack when you're here. It's only about 10 minutes away. I've just had a look. It's the only lock with a sandy beach. So I'm quite intrigued. The photos look quite cool. I can't think of a better place for me to sit down and have my lunch. It's actually like a really nice forestry drive, this. See, now there's spaces up there, but I can't get through because he's parked there. So I've just parked in the drop-off area of the car park. Look, they're even parked all down the side everywhere. I'm going to sit here for 10 minutes look around on google maps see if there's anything else around here that we could do and in that 10 15 minutes if another car moves then i can jump in his spot the problem is it's just there shall i be really sneaky and quick and just go for a run down there to have a look because that's all i really want to do i don't want to come here and chill or party or have a barbecue or anything i just want to see it shall i go and do that you'll never guess what i did it how cool is that the mountains in the background it's proper sand on a lock Yes, that was wild cool. Quick, run back before I get a ticket. Oh, my tits are bouncing too much. Uh -huh. My phone's on 69%. Childish. Well, if this plans out, then this is going to be absolutely epic. I saw a sign on the side of the road that said, Clay Pigeon Shoot, this way. That's something I've always wanted to do. It's like clay discs. They launch them in, up into the air and they get you away. Wow, bang. Uh -huh. Went a few miles down the road debating whether or not to turn around and go back. And I've turned around and gone back. Yeah, I think it's going to be one of those where you book it and stuff like that. But... You don't know unless you find out. If they turn around and say 20 quid, here you go, you can have a go. I'll be like, <laughs> there you go, mate. Thank you very much. I think the sign was just up here somewhere on the left-hand side. So again, I don't really know where it is. Oh, I think that's it there on the left. Clay, yeah, clay pigeon shoot. Clay shooting. Let's go in and just see if, uh, see what, what it's all about. Whether it is an actual thing or not. Whether I can just turn up and go for it. That'd be awesome if I can. It does sound good like. I went around to the reception desk and I went, so I've just seen the sign. I pulled in for something I've always wanted to do. I'll come in and see if I can do it. How much is it? And I thought he said £15. And I was like, oh, great. It, can you fit me in? Can I come in? Can I do it today? And I went, no, 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 no. You need to book it online. We're fully booked today. Normally, Monday to Friday, we might be able to squeeze you in. Sunday, fully booked. Totally understandable. He gave me the sort of the instructions on what to do and how to book and stuff like that. And on there it says £55. I must have misheard him. <laughs> so one thing I've noticed with the Scottish people, they are very helpful and they're dead friendly as well. I still need to go find somewhere to have my lunch. I am starving. My name is Hank and I'm not even Marvin. No, wait there, I said that wrong. My name's Marvin and I'm not even... What? Marvin starving? My name's Marvin because I'm starving. Oh, I don't understand it. Just pulled over. Finally, time for some lunch. What have we got? I have got chicken and stuffing sandwich that I got from the shop. We have got some chicken skewers because I need a bit of meat in my life every now and then. I'm going to scoff this and then straight away jump onto the old military road. It's a big, well, 83 mile road trip across the Cairngorms National Park. It's the road, it's like Route 66. That's the way I 
look at it, it's the A9 was built and then it took all the traffic off this road up there. So it's just like Route 66. But this goes all the way over the um, Cairngorms Mountains. It goes, oh, it's just, a, it's just, it's an amazing road trip. So tune in next time to watch that. Some say it's better than the NC500.